Hello and welcome back to the Maccas Talk Hockey podcast, the podcast where me and my brother Charlie talk about English ice hockey, specifically the NIHL, the National Ice Hockey League. Um, we aren't joined by Dan today, but he's going to be joining us next week. So it's just me and Charlie today. Charlie, you doing all right? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Happy to be back. Um, rolling. Yeah, some a big yeah. topic, big topic we're going to talk about. But we've got a special interview. Hopefully, we got it tomorrow with Bo Neely. So that's going to be in this episode. Um, Bo has said he'd come on the podcast and he is joining us. So uh, yeah, that should be a good one, Charlie. And uh, we hope the Leeds fans and the viewers especially enjoy that one. He's been unbelievable this season, and yeah, he's definitely been a massive addition for Leeds and why they're doing so well, hasn't he, Charlie, on that back end. It was a huge signing for them, a huge yeah. signing. He added that piece they needed. Mm-hmm. And um, he was kind of that guy who they never really replaced Ajax. So he kind of came in and he's yeah. done an unbelievable job for them. And um, he has um, soaking up some ice time. And um, for his age, he's amazing. Yeah, he yeah, it leads are very lucky to have him. I think he get in, in any team's top line, really. Um. The Sheffield drama, that's the main one. Um, before we get into it, make sure to go follow our socials at Maccas Talk Hockey. Um, we're doing Instagram posts, Facebook posts, Twitter, keeping up with all of the, the hockey news around the league. Um, and the main news uh, this week or yesterday is the Sheffield Steel Dogs drama. Now, Sheffield have been struggling in the past few weeks, haven't they, Charlie? They've not really been getting the results. Um, they've had a lot of players missing for certain reasons. And it's come out this week, um, yesterday, First, it was Tim Smith who left the Sheffield Steel Dogs. He's been a part of Sheffield for a long time. He's one of the core players. Um, And he he basically just said in his statement um, that he'd rather spend the weekend with his kids and not falling out of love with the game, but he'd just rather spend time with his family than having to travel around every weekend. And I think that's fair enough, Charlie, isn't it? Especially when you settle down with the family. Yeah, if you're not enjoying the hockey as well and you want to see your kids, it's a valuable thing. And um. There's more important things to life than hockey and family is one of them for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. So, uh, yeah, we wish, I think it's a retirement. Um, so yeah, yeah we I wish Tim so. Smith all the best. Um, and yeah, he's been, a, he was a big piece of that Sheffield team, especially in winning the playoffs and winning a few cups as well. So, uh, yeah. And then a bit later on in the evening, last night, Jack Brammer, um, put out a message, a statement, um, saying that he is moving on from the Sheffield team, um, but he's currently stuck in a predicament. Now, I actually did message Jack last night, um, just seeing how he was and see what was happening. And I think basically what's going on is he wants to develop himself a bit more and he wants to move down a league. Um, but currently there's a little clause or something where the team has to pay money if he wants to go down there and the owner is not letting him move um, down to that team. Um, so he's kind of stuck um, and he wants to fall back in love with the game. Um, he's put a massive um, statement out. I won't read the whole thing, um, but yeah, it's just, it's just gone. Well, I'll talk about it in a sec, Charlie, but just wanted to hear your initial reaction to it. Obviously there's been rumors as well that another player um, is going to be moving on from Sheffield. And by the end of the season, we might see a completely Sheff- uh, different Sheffield team, might we, Charlie? Yeah, um, for me, it's just letting my players play, really. Um, yeah. They don't do this as a full-time thing. And if any people do, it's very minimal. People play hockey as a full-time job in our league. So it's it's sad to see when a player maybe not quite being able to move club if he wants to, etc. You just want to let the players play their hockey, let them enjoy it. And um, yeah, I, I like Jack. He came across really well and, um, yeah. And he works hard for the team and he really did love Sheffield. So it must be a big thing for him to move on because at the start of the season, obviously, he was really, really, he, he loves the Steel Dogs. He'd do anything for them. Yeah, we had him on at the start of the season and he expressed how lucky the the lads were that they got um got this owner to try and save him because it was only at the start of the season, a couple of weeks before, that they weren't even going to be a team going into this season because their ownership had moved on. Um, and it sounds like they all loved the previous owner, but I'm just going to put this out there. This is my opinion. I haven't got this from anywhere else. This is just my opinion. I think we're allowed to express our opinions on the podcast. And I just think it's very tough having an owner who doesn't really care about hockey. You you see it in football all the time, specific owners who, who are businessmen and all owners are businessmen. They're there to try and make a bit of money owning the club. But I think... As a club, it's better to have someone who's a businessman but also cares about ice hockey. And I think 
I expressed last week about how important it is to have the nails as part of owners of our league. And they are businessmen, but they're also massive lovers of ice hockey. They've got a massive passion for ice hockey. And it just seems like, Charlie, that the Sheffield owner, I've forgotten his name, actually, but the Sheffield owner doesn't really have too much of a passion for um, ice hockey. And he's got his Sheffield Steelers, but it kind of looks like the Sheffield Steel Dogs have just been left a bit. um, And they're kind of just that second B team, aren't they? It's a difficult one because um, it, this the the Sheffield Steelers owner um by the sounds of it um put in a lot of work to get the club in the summer, so he clearly has got a plan for the club and has got a, has got a meaning for the club, and he has got a reason for taking over the club. He wouldn't take it over if he didn't want it. Yeah. Um. So he has got a plan, but he uh, he took it over three weeks before the season by the sounds of it, hmm. and I probably he probably didn't get to do what he wanted to do with the team. Yeah. And I don't really know what his plan is. Um, it'd be nice to have some communication, but um, it's really difficult to say things for me personally yeah. when I, I don't that. know the details of stuff. Um, so for me, it's like when the details come out, I'll happily say what I think on it. But right now, it's easy to see from the outside, but we don't actually know what's going on in the inside and how they're trying to keep the dogs. For me personally, the most important thing is that the dogs are still a club. And yeah. that they stay as a club. And if they are, and we've got them in our league, I'm happy. Yeah, that's, that's fair enough. And I think I'm a bit more, I, I guess I express my opinions a bit more with you, which is absolutely fine, by the way. And a lot of people have been sp- expressing their opinions online about it. Um, and I'll, I'll put this out there. If you'd have told me that um, the Sheffield Steel Dogs were getting taken over by an owner whose team in the Elite League is absolutely smashing it right now. Your first thought would be, oh, this this Sheffield, this other Sheffield team, they must be doing pretty well as well. He's obviously quite... But then you look at the Sheffield, they're the only team... Now, I don't know why this is, but they're the only team in the league without that third import. They've had a few players leave, obviously. Lee Bonner left. Um, you had Boisa, who left as well. And sadly, obviously, Alex Graham passed. Um, but he was going to go up to the Steelers anyway. They didn't really replace them. Um, obviously, John O. Phillips come down from the Steelers, but they didn't get that third import. And you'd think if if it's the same owner, you think he'd invest more into it. That's just my opinion. And I think, I don't know, I just think you said that he wouldn't buy the team. There's a purpose he's bought the team, right? He wouldn't buy yeah. the team otherwise. But I can't see what the plan was for this season. And maybe he didn't have enough time to implement that plan. But it just seems like it's not the same Sheffield as we saw last season. Now, it's, it's never going to be under new ownership, but obviously with this core group breaking up and the core team kind of breaking up together, it, it just is a bit sad. I, I found it a bit sad yesterday, Charlie, and there's been a lot of rumours online, which I'll talk about in a minute, but yeah, Charlie, it's just it's just a bit sad. And we uh, we were saying to Jack yesterday, I was messaging him, I just said, I, I really hope this can get sorted out. And who knows what will happen next season with Sheffield? Because it could be a completely different Sheffield Steel Dogs, couldn't it, Charlie? Uh, yeah. For me, for me, like it's the players I feel for if it if it doesn't go quite that way. Because Sheffield have this really close knit community of players oh, who yeah. really get along, but they're gonna still get along. They're gonna still be boys. They're still gonna be mates, and they're still gonna hang out of each other. So um, yeah, just like players, players there, they go. There. I hope they can keep positive. They can keep picking, and um. Like I said, I do think the Steelers owner has a plan. I just okay. think to, well, I, I, I'm pretty confident he would because I don't think he'd take over the club if he thought I'm just going to let it rot. Yeah. It doesn't make sense for a guy like to do that. To be honest, I can see the, the Steel Dogs becoming a Steelers B team next year when he gets mm-hmm. the time to take it over. Um, whether people agree with that or not, we'll see. But um, for me, it's just hopefully the players can stick together and get through this season and to be honest, the results don't really matter if you're losing a big chunk of your core. Just yeah. get through the season, keep going. And um, and yeah, there's a lot of boys on that roster who are very close. So if they can keep stick together and um, keep enjoying some of the away games, etc. Yeah, well, as we mentioned, obviously, Tim Smith retired. Jack Bram is going to be moving on. And I'm guessing he's just not going to play until he can finally get to that um, NHL one team. And then there's rumours that there's one other player who's going to be leaving um, the Steel Dogs. Now, the rumours are, I'm just this, these are just the rumours. I, I actually haven't heard anything. No one's told me any players. But on Twitter, we've heard the name Jason Hewitt move around. And obviously, he used to be at Hull. Um, he used to be, I think it was a player coach at Hull. And obviously, he won the playoffs. Um, and I, Charlie, when I first heard that, 
I can't lie, I did giggle a bit because you you reminded me that it was only a few weeks ago that um all the whole fans were <laughs> were disliking Hewitt in that one game, but I'm sure they'd happily take him back in their team because I think any team would take Jason Hewitt, wouldn't they? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it'd be a good piece for them if they did get him. And um, yeah, I like Hewitt because it doesn't matter who he plays; he could play the Steel Dogs after leaving them. If he does leave, this is obviously just speculation. Yeah, and I know he'd probably be a rat to the Steel Dogs because yeah. that's Jason Hewitt, and he just he plays on the edge of his game at all times. And um, yeah, whoever this player is signing, there's been a lot of hype around it. So um, yeah. if, if people have got the rumors correct, if if, yeah. if anyone wants to message me, my DMs are open. You can message us with your rumors. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of rubbish rumors get thrown around. In the hockey world, which uh, me and Charlie have well, a chuckle. What I've Maybe seen is Dan saying Nylander to Bison. <laughs> Nylander <laughs> signed an eight-year contract, and sadly, Bison still can't a thing at the moment. So, um, <laughs> Dan, I think that, that is may a... be the world's worst rumor. Yeah, that that was the worst, the world's worst one. Um, yeah, he was definitely being serious about that one. Um, but yeah, as as Charlie said, we hope everything can get resolved. We don't want a situation where. Sheffield have to come out of the league. They're literally a couple points from playoffs. So it's not like they're completely out of it. Um, I do think in terms of Sheffield, and we'll talk about them when we look at the results, they do need a couple players, pardon me, to come in um, because they are struggling a bit. Pardon me, sorry. It's not even the Pepsi Max. I got apple juice today. So uh don't know why I'm uh, got the hiccups. Um, but yeah, we, we just hope the Sheffield can uh, sort itself out and hopefully there's a plan for it. But as Charlie said, if we hear anything else from it and it's for sure, um, then we'll definitely speak about it. And I'm sure Jack, I think Jack said he'll hop on at some point when everything gets sorted. So uh, that'll be good. Um, the other little bit of news, it was last week, um, was Josh Hodkinson who joined the whole Seahawks from Whitley Warriors and Whitley put out a statement saying apparently they only knew that Josh was signing five minutes before the announcement. So, uh, that's pretty interesting, Charlie. Um, I don't really know what's going on there. <laughs> yeah, the National League never disappoints. No, um, there's always, always rumours. We always love some drama. Yeah. Clubs never can fully professionally handle their Twitter accounts. No, uh, they get a bit itchy at the fingers by the looks of it. So, um, but it's yeah, that a was semi-pro a... sport. So, <laughs> it was a it was a weird tweet. Um, it seemed like it got solved. But at the end of the day, Josh is going to want to be back in the National League. He's going to be wanting to play at the highest level. And um, he'll be frustrated he didn't get to live out that two-year contract at Leeds. So for him, it's an opportunity to prove that he is a National League D-man. Yeah. I, he was, I, I don't think he's that bad. I think he's he's all right. If, if, if fit in Hull, and I think Hull needed some uh, players because they were only rocking 5 D-men, weren't they? Because one of their players left. So, yeah, it would be, it would be a body into the, the lineup decor. Um, and if they do end up getting Hewitt, that would be massive as well. Um, and it has been released as well, the dates of the semi-finals. I'm not quite sure of the second. Oh, no, I know the second leg, actually. So the first leg for Swindon is the 19th of January against MK Lightning. And then you've got to wait a whole three weeks until the 18th of February. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a three-week wait, isn't it, Charlie? What do you think about that one? A three-week wait. <laughs> it's a four-week wait. But four weeks, sorry. Wait. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not bothered. I don't really care. Um, at the end of the day, it's who plays better over them two legs. Um, yeah. be interesting to see if any suspensions happen four weeks. Oh, um, I'm, I'm guessing be. they didn't be included in the cup competitions because it's still the team, yeah, isn't yeah. it? But, um, yeah, um, if Swindon, uh, we need to perform in that first leg. Uh, need to try tighten up in MK. Uh, we let some sloppy passes through, but we were tired. And for MK, um, pressure's on. They they need to win something this year. Um, yeah, they, they do. Don't, it's an absolute nightmare season for them. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, they need to win a couple things. So the National Cup's going to be probably the first one they want to win. Um, so pressure is on for MK, for Swindon. I'm happy that we're in the Cup. We shouldn't have been in the Cup in terms of the situation we had to go through with no <laughs> rings. So um, bring it on. Uh, I'm just willing the boys on and... Um, this season's just been a journey for me. I'm loving it because um yeah yeah at some one point I didn't know if we have a season and now I just get to watch Malazinski score a flipping hat trick every week. <laughs> we'll go on to that in a sec. Um, but yeah, the cup competitions they'll be good. Um, I think the first leg of the Leeds one is 
sorry, I've got hair in my mouth. Uh, is it's the second of February, so uh, that'll be interesting. Um, they're on at different times, so I don't know what I think about that. I I think cup competitions should be on the same day. I think it has more suspense to it. Um, but at least it means we get to watch the streams and stuff. Um, there wasn't really too much other news or drama. Leeds are still yet to get an import. Um, their third import. Um, but I have no doubt they'll have to get one in really, Charlie, before their cup game, won't they? If they if they want to really go against Hull. Yeah, um, I'm sure they will. Uh, there's been um, again rumors circulating around on Twitter about their import. So um, yeah, yeah, uh, they'll bag a good import. They just thing is with Leeds, right? They just need an import who's going to just slot in because yeah. Leeds are a sick team. They've got the offensive firepower. Oh, you yeah. just have an import just to complement some of the Brits they've already got. Just yeah. shove an import with Howler and Hayward, and he's going to do a good job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's kind of like. If you can just get a guy who is a good Canadian, a decent Canadian, he's going to bag more points than he would in another team in our league because they only need a player who's just going to keep the train rolling because they're yeah. still rolling. Yeah. So for me, I think they'll sign a decent import and he'll probably end up bagging about four points again. Yeah, you're right. They've got that brown um, waist and um, power in line, so the BBB line, and it's just that Mac Howler. Um, then the missing import and Hayward. So that that would be saying the... that. Get yeah. import for the third line and keep Mister nearly a point a game Ollie Endicott on the yeah. second line because that man is an absolute player. And um, well, yeah, we'll go he's, on. he's on fire right now. We'll, we'll go. We'll go on to the game. So this weekend we'll start with the double header, which was the Knights versus the Phantoms. And they just keep rolling through, even without that import. They get the four-point weekend against the Phantoms. Um, they beat them 5-3 at home on the Saturday. Mr. Matt Cowlett grabbing a hat-trick. And if you haven't checked out the hat-trick, go check out on Leeds um, Twitter. He is just, wow. The Two of the goals were like exactly the same. He just literally speed skates down the wing, cuts inside, and it's, the release is as quick. And one just crept through Mar because it was that quick of a release. And then he also grabbed um, uh, a couple assists as well. And then on the Sunday, he got two points um, where the Knights beat the Phantoms 4-1 away from home. It's just a joke. And it's not just defensively, Charlie. We go on about this every week. Defensively, they are just so solid. I know that starts with gospel, but the D in front of them, the D core is just so solid. I think they complement each other so well. Yeah, their D core's dramatically improved this year. Yeah. Like last year you'd say that in the in the nicest way, gospel and the offensive core were the key to Leeds Knight success. Yeah. Whereas yeah. defensively, while their numbers are clear on any a other joke, team yeah. in the league. Um, and you look at their decor and you see why. Griffin, Bo Neely, McMullen, Baldwin, Colvin, Baby Perry, Perry is a third line. And one more guy. I'm forgetting his name. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you've got seven D-men who are great there. They're all very high-pressing. They've got the best penalty kill in the league. Um, Leeds are just Leeds. Mm. Um, they probably scored more shorthanded goals than power play goals against them. Like, <laughs> they are crazy. And then I did mention Howler at the start of the year because Howler is that guy. Yeah. But he is so quick. He's probably top two skater in the league with Colby Tower for me. Mm. Um. And then um, he is so direct and he's got a cannon of a shot on him. For a Brit player like him in our league, is crazy because he is a joke. And um, he's, he's a, a different type to Brown, isn't he? I think it's good they've that got, he's a different type. They've got two players at Leeds for me who are literally like game changers. And there's not many in the league for me. Of them, like Venus, Malas, Brown, Howler, that type of calibre player, like the elites of the elites in the league. And Howler's one of them. Venus. He just turns it on, like even against Swindon when they bagged the overtime winner, oh, um, and they they snuck that, that goal. Game. He scored. How would scored a goal out of nothing? Yeah, like they were doing nothing to us, and then a player like Howlett just went, "Okay, we're going to get it back to a drawing game, and we're going to take this game to OT." And yeah. that's the type of player he is. He wins games for Leeds single handedly, and um, he's just a joke. So um, shout out to him. He's Rapidino as well. Yeah, he is. Um, I'm gonna give him a little shout out. Um, me and Charlie were talking about him. I was bigging him up the other day, and he is it's the guy we're interviewing, Bo Neely. He grabbed a couple points this weekend as well, a couple of assists. He scored a goal as well. Um, he could have easily got our player of the week if Howlett hadn't have put on well, Howlett and Malas hadn't have put on such a show. 
Um, but he's he's just been vital, man. I know you mentioned Zajac and him not playing, and he stepped in for Zajac. But you've also got to think Hazel Dean. They didn't have they don't have Hazel Dean this season, and he was a very very good player, all round defenseman. And I just I think Bo Neely's come in and he's doing just as good as job as Hazel Dean was doing for Leeds. Do you agree, Charlie? <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hazel Dean is a different type of player, of yeah. course. But um, yeah, he's he's just he's really solidified that defensive core. But then you haven't got to talk about him. The import D is just going under the radar, doing his job. Yeah. And like their just decor is just really good this year. Mm-hmm. And Boneely and McMullen are huge parts of that. Just to and, put um, it in perspective, tough, sorry. Yeah, just to put in perspective, um, they have conceded the least amount of goals. Obviously, sixty-five goals, right? The next team, right? The next team who's conceded the least is MK with 90. So they've conceded 25 less goals than... Is that 25 or 35? 25. 25 less goals than Lightning. That That is nuts if you think about it. That is a um, crazy statistic. And um, and the thing is, right, going into the season, and this is no diss on the players, Um, you, you would have put MK's and Leeds' defence probably on par. But yeah. the players have stepped up, and um, and uh, when their offense may not be quite as high scoring, they're not conceding. Like no. I've seen a lot more performances from Leeds where they concede one or two goals this year yeah. compared to last year. So they don't have to score the six goals a game, which they do anyway. Yeah. Um, they can generally win games three one this year, which is well, they, they, they won. They won. Yeah. Um, they were three one up, and I think it was an empty net on the Sunday. So. If you, they're winning you, games by just one or two goals yeah. because they, they can sit on their defence. Like you said to me the other day, all you need to do, it right, so if you concede average two or three goals a game, all you need to score is, if you only concede two, is three. And then if it's three, you just need to score four. And, and Leeds can do that. So it's, it's just, it's overpowered. And that's why they're doing so well this season. Their team just clicks every year. And I know you just mentioned him before, Oli Endicott as well. He is stepping up massively um he's already got more points than he got last season um he's nearly on a point per game as well um he's just putting a shift in and he's on the power play as well and i, I think this is just credit to aldridge for building the player up like ollie and just knowing the strengths of those younger players because he spent so long coaching in the oha yeah it's like it's a great example of ollie as a development of a player as well because yeah. he, he played that year in Swindon and he got opportunities and he got the opportunities he needed at 17. He didn't get loads, but he got a couple. Mm. He then went to Leeds and he did well last year. He he did, he he picked up some decent points. He contributed where he was needed, but he didn't really get that opportunity on the top six or the power play or etc. To be a point scorer. Now, yeah. Now, Ollie Endercott's, he's I can imagine the next import who comes in, Aldridge isn't going to be thinking, yeah, this guy just sits in the top six. Mm. Aldridge is going to be thinking, if this import doesn't perform, he drops down a line. If uh, if Buesa stops scoring, he'll drop down a line. Because someone like Oli is going to go sit in his spot. Because yeah. Oli Endercott yeah. grinds for the puck, he compliments Brown, and um, every time I go on Twitter at the moment, I just see him bagging an assist or a goal, yeah. and I'm like, go on, son. I'm like, he's generally developing really well, and... um. Yeah, he's a good lad as well. He just gets his head down and he works. And um, he's earning every right to be that that guy at Leeds. Yeah, 100%. And those two wins keep MK at the top, um, two points ahead and a game in hand. So it could put him four points ahead. But it's very tight. It is very tight. Um, we'll move keeps on. Leeds at the top, sorry. Yeah, sorry, Leeds at the top. Sorry, did I say MK? Yeah, keeps Leeds yeah. at the top. Oh, and welcome back. We've got another interview on the podcast. Charlie, do you want to introduce him? Yeah, we'd like to welcome onto the podcast today a player who has took the league by storm since joining. He's a clever, he's got a clever two-way game, and he plays for the Leeds Knights. It's Bo Neely. Welcome on, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks uh, for having me on. I'm excited to uh, excited to be on the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> how have you found it um, moving back to England and obviously playing for the best team currently in the national league? Yeah, it's uh it's been really great so far. Um it'd been a couple of years since I've uh, been out of England and uh honestly found it welcoming to come back and it was easy as well, you know, knowing a few guys already on the team. Yeah. Yeah. I I wanted to ask by saying, did you feel any pressure like joining Leeds because you you probably heard about them last season obviously winning the league and then the playoffs as well. Did you feel any pressure coming in a new D-man? 
Yeah, I, I would say so. Uh, I, for sure, like winning the league and winning playoffs is, is a big deal. And I, and I want to come in and I want to perform well, especially for a team with high expectations going into the next season. So yeah, yeah there was definitely good there. there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you've, you've had a really good start to the season so far. Did you have any like expectations before you joined the league? Did you did you expect what it to be like it is? Um, Honestly, I was just trying to go in and just kind of, you know, almost play by ear. Like, obviously I want to play good, but I don't want to put too much pressure on myself. Whereas I end up just playing bad. I just want to, you know, stay relaxed, stay calm, but also focused on the task. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's shocked you that, well, I say shocked, what's been the most surprising thing since joining the league? Is it the physicality? Is it the speed? Yeah, honestly, the, there's a lot of, physical teams out there a lot of guys that'll that'll hit you and there's a lot of quick players i mean on our team matt hallett really quick guy <laughs> he's <spread> me <laughs> and then you got guys like kieran brown i mean it's just amazing hockey players like the league's really good in my opinion and it's been it's really good mm -hmm. and um you knew ron aldridge i'm guessing from the okahagen days yeah, a uh, few years back. Yeah, played for Ryan. One one of the reasons why I also wanted to come here. Um, yeah. honestly, loved him as a head coach back then, and you know, I I know him, and I I thought I had a good relationship with him. So, uh, you know, it was just another incentive for me to come here. How, how did the move actually come about then? Because obviously, you've been playing out in America. I think it was before you moved to Leeds, and you just finished the season in America. Did did Ryan Aldridge get on the phone to you straight away? Um, not really. I, I approached, I think I approached him first, um, mm -hmm. way back when I was playing, I knew playing in two years would give me a, um, a a British yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so after last season, I kind of just wanted something different. I didn't really want to stick with that team mm -hmm. and I contacted Ryan about it and it just kind of went from there and yeah, now I'm here. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I, you said it, it helped, obviously, knowing the likes of Ollie and Bailey, who you played with in Ockhagen as well. I think you played with Josh Shaw as well. Was he in there yeah. as well? Yeah, Josh Shaw was there, yeah. Good have, they, as well. have they been a big part of, like, settling into the Leeds Knights? And I, I know you live with – I think you live with them don't, as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I live in the uh, apartments. Uh, Bailey Perry's here. You hang out with him a lot. Oh, <laughs> 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 <I love you. laughs> um yeah they ollie and bailey helped a lot uh just selling into the league uh you know talked to josh a bit before coming here as well um yeah hung out with ollie and bailey and you know definitely shy at first but i think i've settled in now so, yeah. who's, who's the best cook in the house then <laughs> it was definitely me uh, <laughs> I, I make some good food in my opinion yeah uh, possible from this guy yeah <laughs> I was gonna ask. Um, you wear a cage, don't you, when you play? Ah, uh, yeah, I got a bubble on. Yeah. <laughs> is there a reason why you go for the bubble? There is. Um, last season I broke my nose. Um, oh. and had to get surgery to fix it, and then came back, broke it again. <laughs> and it's just I've been very cautious with it because it's just super fragile now. So, the bubble. I mean, just kind of a <laughs> just. I don't know. I get chirped for it a lot, but I, you know, I like just kind of protect my face, you know. <laughs> does, does it not steam up in the bubble? It does. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you got to try to breathe through the nose to breathe out <laughs> of the bubble. But once you're skating around it, it, it clears up. So it's not too much of a big deal. Ah, yeah, but Fair enough. Yeah. We'll take it back to the start then. So you, it says you grew up elite prospects in Calgary. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, I'm from Calgary. What was the development like? As well, what what age did you start playing hockey? And I'm guessing it was quite a big thing down in Canada. Yeah, hockey's huge in Canada. I think I started playing when I was probably like uh, three or four years old. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's the biggest sport in Canada, um, so everyone plays it. And so the development is honestly, it's really good growing up over there, and just like growing up, just into my teens playing out there and then moving to England is yeah just uh what good... was that always uh like a option for you to move over to the England and play in the OHA um it wasn't really like I hadn't really thought about it growing up um 
but I had heard about um, Okanagan because there are Okanagan schools and stuff in yeah. Canada and I played against them. Um, so I had some good connections with them as well. And just my father had moved to England for work and mm -hmm. thought that would be cool. It was something that I didn't want to regret not doing when I grew up. And yeah, yeah, it's that would be fun. So I did, did you it. stay in Swindon then while you were playing in OHA? Yeah, yeah, I lived in Swindon. Uh, actually <laughs> lived with Ollie, which was oh, okay. Uh, although that was that was during the COVID year, so. We still practice a lot, just not as many games, unfortunately. Yeah. But you know, super fun. And yeah, I really enjoy living in Swindon, actually. Yeah. Really? Oh, not me and well, many people would say that. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. Oh, I love Swindon. I, mean, I hadn't really lived anywhere else. And you know, in the season before as well, um, I lived in another house. Um, and honestly, we used to go to Wildcast games and I always really enjoyed doing that. So <laughs> Who were the players who stood out to you when you used to watch the Wildcats game? Because it was Malazinski at Swindon then no. as well back in the day. I think so. I I think so. It might and have been Hoogie, Hoogie, Nell and Malas on that line, I think. Yeah, Malas. And then obviously Aaron Nell as well. Watch yeah. him. He's the goal scorer. <laughs> yeah, he's still, still going yeah. along, isn't he? <laughs> and I, was Rennie Marr playing? He, yeah. he might have started that might have been his it first wasn't too long season. ago when he was in the uk mm -hmm. but um yeah it was um i think that was the year where we came second in the league but yeah, um, yeah, i remember it was a good season for swindon mm -hmm. what would you say as a hockey player is your biggest strength um <laughs> my biggest strength i'd probably say uh i really Think my skating is a yep. Strong I was about player. to say that. I'd say yours is that. Do you reckon that's because you grew up and skated a lot when you were in Canada? I I think that definitely had a big part with it. Just growing up, playing in a big surrounding with a lot of other hockey players, especially you know in the winter when there's outdoor rinks everywhere and you can just go out skate on them. And then growing up, you know, working with your team and then working with power skating coaches, it just it definitely helped. Sure. What, what would you say the main differences were from when you were playing in the youth of Canada to coming over to England and playing in the OHA? Do you think they focus more on the skating in Canada and it kind of gets you ready for when you actually build up your hockey skills coming uh, around Europe? I think so. Honestly, when I came to England, I thought the game was more focused on skating. Oh, okay. Physicality. So I think growing up, playing in Canada, the uh, learning how to become a better skater definitely helps over here because yeah. I think there's a lot of guys that are really good skaters over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, you made the move to the um, OHA in Austria. Is that because the OHA in England stopped because of COVID? Um, I moved over there because I was too old to play another year in England. Because oh, okay. I was yeah, playing yeah. on another season and I went to go play U20s, but it just happened to you know, COVID kind of screwed up the England part as well. But yes, it was just a quick move over there. And it was also kind of tough for me to find a spot to play. And the yeah. OHA really helped as well. I, I looked at the OHA there and the amount of nationalities <laughs> within that OHA team was a joke. How did everyone communicate? Because there was people from Germany, Russia, Netherlands, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy to be honest. Uh, it was only when I played there. There was a few Canadian guys, a lot of Russians. Yeah, um, <laughs> a lot of the, uh, honestly, most guys could speak English, but there are points when it is just like there's like people speaking Dutch, Russian, just like anything, like Polish. I don't, like I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> so it was definitely interesting, but uh, for the most part, people were able to communicate in English, so that definitely yeah. helped. Yeah, hundred percent. Go on, Charlie. On to the Leeds Knights. I want to know who the funniest guy in the dressing room is. Who gets the boys going? Who gets the boys? Who gets the boys relaxed before a game? Funniest guy in the dressing room. Honestly, Bailey Perry is pretty funny in the dressing room. <laughs> you only saying that because he's forced you. to say that one. That was a forced. <laughs> Honestly, he does some. He does some funny stuff. Maybe not his words, but his actions are pretty funny. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Ollie's pretty funny. He's Ollie's a super talkative guy, and you know he's usually saying some funny stuff. So um, another another good one, honestly. Kieran Brown's pretty funny as well. Helps yeah. boys relax, you know, calm down before the game, just get dialed in. 
What's, what's it like? Def- obviously, you're the defensive and at Leeds, and I'm guessing in training you're having to come up against the likes of Brown, Howler, and Baron as well as a different type of player. What's it like coming against them in training? <laughs> yeah, it's it's always a challenge when when those guys are coming down against you, and and you know you're always trying to stop them. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Um, it's yeah, it's it's. I mean, it, it gives you more motivation when you got a guy coming down and you want you want to stop him. So it's definitely uh, it helps push you to be better. What what kind of stuff are you doing alongside hockey? I forgot to ask. Actually, have you got a job or are you still in um, education? Uh, I'm not in education. I was working at a rink at a Christmas market over the winter. Oh, nice. Uh, down right now. So currently, just mostly working out and just playing hockey. <laughs> Fair Living enough. the dream. You're living the Canadian dream. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, is there been a player for you who you've played against in the league this year who's like stood out and you've gone, ah, this is going to be a long game? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, in in when we play against Swindon, actually, um, Labuele, he's he's Ooh. a good, he's a good player and he's he's a bit of a tank. So you know he's hit me a couple times and and I felt them. So it. <laughs> I've been scared for your nose. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm like, I'm like, this is gonna be a physical game. Those those are the best games, but they're also, you know, they're they're very hard working as well. So you can be in for a long one there. I was gonna mention that actually. What's it like playing against the likes of you you said you like playing in those games? What's it like playing against Milton Keynes and Swindon, the the top teams in the division? Yeah, those games are good i mean obviously since it's the top teams you want everyone wants to win i mean i'm not saying other teams don't want to win but it's just it, <laughs> it gives you it's more, there's more Sorry. pressure to win no worries there's, there's definitely more pressure to win because it's just you're you're constantly battling for points at the top of the league so it just it makes it like really tough it's you know it's they're really good games though and, and yeah. you've you've kind of made the the home stadium a fortress because you obviously you lost to Milton Keynes away and then you came back and Charlie actually said um got a message from Ollie saying we're we're winning the, the the game today is that the kind of mentality that Aldridge has got with the team that you you're going to win no matter what at home yeah especially after going going to their their barn yeah. and taking a loss you know we can't it's just the mentality is like we cannot lose this game like it is it's a must win it I mean because it is and you, and you never want to lose at home. You never want to lose away, but especially when you're in front of the fans and everyone's, you know, everyone's coming to watch you, it's it definitely gives you more reason to win. And yeah, it and probably go on, Charlie, actually go on. Does it help being um a, a D man in front of Sam Goss? I was about that's the question I had. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Sam is an amazing goalie. Uh it's definitely great when you know that he's behind you and net. So he got, you know, shot coming in, he, you know, yeah. The, good uh good chance that he's gonna save it i mean i think top goalie in the league right now save yeah, percentage comfortably he's, yeah he's so helpful on the back end Does I, he give you the pointers you need um as a d-man is he a goalie who will help you out in terms of where he wants you to be yeah yeah he, he's always communicating with us uh especially in the d zone he's pointing out where guys are watch back door watch slot he's always there just giving us tips helping out yeah he's a great goalie mm-hmm. and Playing alongside, who's your D partner at the moment with Leeds? Um, I was playing with uh, Baldwin last game. I, and I, have you played against, uh, played alongside Noah? Because he's obviously come in and we haven't really seen defenseman imports come into our league. What is it about Noah which makes him a really solid D man in our league? Because it seems like Aldred really likes him as well. Yeah, Noah's a really good defenseman. Um, I know he's a bit on the smaller side of D man, mm-hmm. um, but he's. That helps with his skating. He's super agile, like especially on the point. He's super shifty. Like you don't know if he's gonna fake a shot, take the shot, skate down the wall, everything. Like his passing is good, his vision is good. Yeah, really good. He's guy. he's picking it up as well because he he got an injury at the start of the season as well, didn't he? Yeah, he had a shoulder injury, but yeah, he's he's back, full health it seems right now. So yeah, yeah. he's been really good. Um, how are you looking forward to playing in um the cup games because it's the first kind of cup i guess yeah the cup games against hull they're going to be they're going to be sold out as well in leeds how are you looking forward to playing in them yeah really looking forward to that i've never been in uh kind of in-season tournament sort mm-hmm. of setup before so i'm quite excited to get it going and i've 
I know that these cup games are are aggregate score as well, which I've I've never done before. So it's definitely something new to me, and I'm I'm excited to to start playing in them. Yeah, go on, Charlie. Have you got any goals for yourself on a individual note for the season? Sorry, can you say that again? Have you got any goals for yourself on an individual note for the season? Because obviously we know what you guys want as a team. You want to yeah. win them all, but um, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, I think just. Just, I think the team comes first for me, yeah. and I really just I want to just help out as much as possible. I I don't want to be a liability on the ice. I want to be an asset. Mm-hmm. Um, so just anything I can do, just you know, blocking shots, anything, helping out in the D zone, just is anything's good that that works for me. That's a goal for me. When when you first came in, um, what was the kind of thing which Aldridge was saying to you as a coach? What was his like? I guess, role for you in the team? Because there's different roles for every player in that Leeds team, which makes it just tick like a train. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, Ryan Ryan knew kind of my play style um, when I played uh, for him back at OHA. Um, mm. So I was trying to just kind of be just like that, just a solid defenseman on the back end, but still able to kind of help out on the offensive end as well. Yeah. To just support the guys up ice. Um and I I've I hope I've been helping out. <laughs> but yeah, that's just kind of what I think my role has been so far. Yeah. Charlie, have you got hey, any more questions? Out got to a... us, um, if you've ever seen a pub, we got a lad called Dan on and um he watched your first game for Leeds. And the minute he saw you, he's been saying Bo Neely is that guy for Leeds. He's that guy. And um <laughs> we highly rate you on the pod. So um you're doing the job for our point of view as hockey fans, we we notice you on the ice, you're skating, really does stand out. Yeah, thanks very much. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> um, I wanted to end by just asking about Leeds Knights as just a franchise and how good of a franchise it is and how everyone around Leeds Knights um, treats you so well. What What's it like playing for them? Yeah, I mean, it's awesome. Uh, honestly, best franchise I've played for, for sure, mm-hmm. just coaches are great we've got a great equipment guy everyone in the locker room gets along it's just it's yeah. a really good atmosphere locker room's super nice you know we're getting stuff washed we get it's just super nice rink's great and the fans are awesome you know i haven't really i've never really played in front of a big crowd before really um and this was yeah it was just something like really new and super exciting so yeah it's just awesome you know? nice one charlie you always end with this question uh what is your message to the Leeds nice fans Leeds <laughs> um, I guess just get excited for the rest of the season. Now that's back half, we'll be we'll be even stronger. So just get ready for us. Yeah, yeah. You've got that two point lead at the moment with the game and that. It's going to be tight, but that's that's what makes this uh, league so much better than I guess last season. It it wasn't as competitive as it was this season. So yeah, it's looking good. We appreciate you hopping on. Um. Good luck for the rest of the season and we'll see you when you come down to the Link Centre again because I think we've got you a couple more times. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, honestly, thank you very much for having me on. It was, it was great to talk to you guys. Yeah, thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you. We'll move on to MK, um, who only had one game this weekend. And yeah, it was a 10-1 victory over the Sheffield Steel Dogs. And we said the Steel Dogs were struggling. They were missing a few players. I think Bissonette's out at the moment. Um, So... Yeah, it's just tough, isn't it? And I saw a few tweets and one of them, I think Sheffield have 14 shots on goal in the whole game. And you can just tell something's not quite right at the moment, Charlie, isn't it? And No, it's not. But it yeah. goes back to that point again of MK are flipping good at home. <laughs> yeah. Don't lose games at home. Um, yeah. As much as Steel Dogs probably won't honour, MK have been doing this to every team. Yeah. They've been pumping teams. They're averaging like 20, 25 shots against a game, which is really low protecting their goalie you wouldn't even you, people you forget that Headley's out um it's curling Curlin, stepping Curlin's up, doing well but the defense is stepping up and the defense yeah. is helping him and um and for me MK are a very 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 good team at home and to beat them in that rink is just it's like mission impossible I don't think they've lost there since the start of the season against Hull no um <laughs> they are that hard to beat in their own rink and um the thing is, as well, is if you look at the point sheet, it is on MK's Twitter. It they're spread across. Spread across their that's, whole about to, that's my next point. Yeah. Um, so for MK, it's just they need to transfer this form into smaller rinks. They need to start yeah. bashing teams, but they do make the league look silly sometimes because 
they have fun. And for Sheffield, um, I can imagine when you go a couple down, your head drops and you just go, I kind of want to get back to Sheffield. And MK yeah. sadly don't stop. <laughs> they keep no. going. I think the netminder situation, I think Samoz just started, then Crow got pu- uh, he got pulled for Crow and then Samozra went back in for the other Crow. way around. Crow Sorry, yeah, started. Crow, Samozra went in and then Crow went back in, which just shows. And I think there was almost 20 shots a period. Um, yeah. it, it was it was domination and pressure. And you feel for the goalies in a game like that because a goalie never wants to be in a game where they have to they have to sit on 50 shots yeah. in a night. And um, especially and like when I they're said, going in the net as well. <laughs> and if, if everything's not not great at Sheffield if the dressing room's not really that happy and it's going to be even more difficult when you're going into a dressing room three or four one down and 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 you're trying to keep going and I, I can understand why it gets so tough and um yeah yeah I hope the Sheffield boys can pick up a result because um uh, Jack knows this as well I've always had a lot of respect for Sheffield oh yeah um, I like Sheffield they they've they've bummed us in playoffs so many times which annoys <laughs> me but they'll love hearing that so fair play to them but yeah. players like Charlie Thompson, he's always given me the the massive amounts of respect. Even Greg Wood, when he was coached there, yeah. he'd always yeah. chat to me after games and talk to me about what he did tactically and stuff. I've spoken to Zamodra and stuff. So they're they're just a really nice group of lads. So yeah. They're one of them teams which I want to win and I want to see Chazza get back on the score sheet. Well, so, I think um, he might have an injury. Um, he put a picture on his story at him at A&E. So... Hopefully that's yeah. not too serious. Um, just on Greg Wood as well. He's he literally we started the podcast and he gave us a little message. Um, he said that he listened to the podcast yeah. this was a few months ago. So yeah, Greg Wood's a nice guy, and hopefully we can get him on the podcast at some point. Um, and he can talk about yeah. his time in ice hockey. Um, and quickly to mention on the Sunday they lost four two to Raiders. Considering everything that's happening, that's actually not actually that bad considering how Raiders have been in recent weeks. Um, and apparently there's a few players crying as well, which is not nice to hear. And yeah, just sh- I think I'll say this: I think they were the closest bunch of lads as a team um, in the whole league. They they've had that core group for so long. They've won, they've lost together, they've won the playoffs together. And yeah, I, as we've said so many times, we just hope it, something can get sorted. Um, we'll move on to the Wildcats on the Saturday. We had a seven three victory against the Raiders, and it was five nil after the first period, wasn't it, Charlie? It was quite a, a rampant rampant performance from the Wildcats who've been very good at home um since it's reopened. Uh, yeah, we, we 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 obviously had a tough weekend versus MK mm. before um playing one of the best teams in the league, got two points out of four, which I was happy with. Yeah. And then we we went right back to where we've been going before. We're playing an on form Raiders team of eight points out of ten. And everyone just turned up that game. Uh, maybe not Aaron, obviously, because he got hit by a puck. <laughs> he got in but, the face um, the puck, but he's all he right because he did play on the went, Sunday. So he turned into Cage Boy. So um, he went and sniped <laughs> in Cage Man. What a player! He's, he's the next Swindon youngster, as I'd say. Seventeen-year-old Aaron now sniping against bees. Um, what a talent! But um, he probably hates me if he's listening. To <laughs> but um, no, Swindon very professional again. Um, uh, to be fair, I would have liked to see us um, see us dominate the third again, but it was over after the third. We went five up, um, yeah. and um, yeah, just oh, I've just got to bring it up coast <laughs> to coast, shorthanded. Well, not coast to coast, but D zone to offense zone, shorthanded. And oh. funny if it is right, I've been telling people that Malas is the best player to step into this league <laughs> since probably like 2017. <laughs> I know I'm right. <laughs> like I just know it. I don't have to have anyone tell me. I watch Malas coast to coast against Raiders and slap shot at top left. And then you think he's having a good weekend. Then the flipping next game, he goes and bags a hat trick, puts the team on his shoulders again in Slough and wins the game 7-6. He's just a machine. And like he's playing some of the best hockey I've seen him play. And yeah. you can tell me whatever player you want, I take Malas over. Yeah, Malazinski for me. I know we watch him every week, but... Yeah, he's the best. He's the best full round of player in the league. He's, he's goals the best on... player. Just end it there. His go... end the podcast. Finish it right now. I'm his, happy. His goals on Saturday, right? So if you haven't seen it, go check the highlights. It's the tightest of angles. He just slap shots it, top bins. I don't know how he's fit it in there, and then just coast to coast, short and just stuffs it through the legs. 
And then Sunday, we'll go on to Sunday. We beat, oh, what a game, by the way. The Bees were 4 yeah, 1 up, um, and the Wildcats come back. We, we did dominate them in the second and the third period, and we won 7 6. And I think it wasn't just Malas, I think the whole team did step up, but yeah, it did we help definitely did. that Malazinski just scored some beauties. And I, I was speaking to dad, actually, on a reel. I was speaking to dad, and you'd think as a player gets older, you'd see a bit of digression uh, what is it regression of a player you'd see him drop down a bit which you'd expect but he's turned into more of a sniper since he's got older he's gone right i i'm just gonna snipe the puck more now and he's shooting more and more and he, he got that wrist injury a couple years ago or a couple seasons ago and this season he's just shooting the puck like the best i've seen him shoot and he's hitting the top corner every time and yeah, it it was an unbelievable game, and fair enough to the bees. I know they're missing a couple of D men, um, and Priest. I know he let seven in, but he was actually very, very good. He, he saved he saved them on the five on three, didn't he? But pardon me. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a cracking game, wasn't it, Charlie? And um, yeah, Malas is third top point scorer now, third or fourth. Um, yeah, he's yeah, chasing he's it down. Top point scorer, but, um, yeah, there, there were some funny moments that game as well. The boarding <laughs> was um an absolute random thing. I don't know if they'll release it on the highlights, but Joe Baird skated across half the ice pad to board someone into the boards. <laughs> Got a five minute, said to the team, didn't even matter, we didn't concede and came out yeah. again. Um he's he's obviously a vet, he knows what he's doing. Um, but that was quite funny. Um and um yeah, it was a good game to be fair. And um he's he's, he's put in a performance. Um I've seen them get battered a couple of times. Well, no, not battered, sorry. Um They've been beat fair and square a couple of times in the last couple of weeks, but they really put up a fight against a very good Swindon team. And they came out on the short side on another game. They wouldn't. And uh, yeah. their yeah. power play as well, just to put it out there is flipping lethal. Um, yeah. Vanya, Vanya Vital, Balaz Gabay, Ed Bradley. <laughs> they have got a good power play. Um, and, uh, they they just caused quite a lot of mayhem. I think they scored three power play goals. So um yeah. doesn't help our PK percentage considering we're fourth worst, but um no. they deserve them goals. So um yeah, bees I think will pick up points in that home ring for sure. But um Swindon again just showed the difference from last season to this season was we didn't quite have the third line in scoring depth last year, and this year we're getting the points from the third line. Yeah. But yeah. we're getting points from everywhere and then we're still getting that top quality oh. performances from 17-year-old Aaron Now and <laughs> Malazinski. I wouldn't even say it's the third line. I'd say yeah. we've got three different lines. You'd probably say Malas and Nell um, with Bully at the moment who's stepping up. Um, Ali swapped in the third period. Well, well. And Bally, yeah. Um, yeah. But you'd say that's probably our top one. But then you've got an equally good second and third. So, yeah, it's interesting. Right, let's move on from the Wildcats because we have talked to them about a bit. And obviously Malazinski, who everyone knows we love. Um, right, Solway Sharks, massive um, four-point weekend. They beat the Pitbulls in uh, Dumfries twice. First 6-4 and second game 5-3. Tight games, tight games. Bristol game and good games, but... Bristol will be disappointed they haven't picked up two points or at least two points, Charlie. Yeah, it's um it's a bad weekend for Bristol. Uh the players will agree with me from Bristol. You yeah. are going to a team which is your rivals for playoffs and you picked up zero points. Yeah. And that'll be disappointing for them, especially with the long coach journey back. And considering they equaled it up with six minutes to go on the second night as well. But again, turning it around, huge four points for Solway without giving any points for Bristol. Yeah. Um, they are Puts them in a playoff set. spot as well. And um, congratulations to John Strange for being in the playoffs for the first time this year. Yeah. Um, Mr. Showbiz. And uh, uh, we need to raise the bar. So we're going to call John Dunbar. <laughs> uh, he's on fire right now. And then um, their Quick decals... shout out to Callie Robertson. I know we mentioned last game, got another two big goals this weekend. Um, He's just slotted perfectly. He has just slotted perfectly into Solway, hasn't he? And he, as Dan yeah. said, I'm surprised he didn't go at the start of the season. Um, Coming to the end of it then, the last double header was the Seahawks against the Tigers. And the Tigers have come out with a four-point weekend. Did you see that coming, Charlie? Yes, um, because, because the Tigers needed something. Uh, Heck is actually suspended, isn't he? Yeah, uh, so, so was Bobby they Chamberlain. Did, they did it without one of their imports, but Tigers got Hazel Dine in. He's rolling. Uh, their team, I felt like they needed something big, and I felt them playing a whole team which is very much struggling. 
They only just beat the Steel Dogs, who were struggling as well. Um, and they took over the game. They they made they made them pay for not having Chamberlain. They made them pay for not being on good form. And um, Talford will be buzzing with that result for this weekend because yeah. it just I think it just keeps them quite far away from the playoff battle, which is what they're going to want. Yeah. So Talford are on thirty points, and the Bees, who are now in ninth, are on twenty four. So and yeah. they've got a game in hand as well, and it only puts them three points behind Hull. Um, so they could even sweep up or uh, slide up to uh fifth position um if they can get a couple more wins on the bounce so uh yeah very good weekend for telford um we'll have to see if the seahawks can bounce uh see if the seahawks well um (laughs) see if they can bounce back um that was all the results from saturday and sunday um i've got the fixtures up here so we'll quickly go through them um because we've not got too long left i forgot to do an entrance to uh bo neely's interview but i would have placed it somewhere um in the podcast when we were talking um probably after we talked about the news um solway against leeds on the friday and then solway travel down to bristol on the saturday so it'll be the third consecutive game charlie that bristol and solway play this is a must win for bristol isn't it they've, they've got to win in their own barn yeah and they're going to do it through a you Harlingren winner. Oh, bold shout. And then Bristol travel up to Leeds. Um so <laughs> they kind of need to win, yeah. uh need to win against Solway, don't they? And, uh yeah, Kieran Brown's gonna score a hat trick, but that's not so bold. <laughs> well, Swindon have um a double home. We've got one against the Bees on uh Saturday, so we play him again, and then we've got uh Peterborough on the Sunday at home. Um, and then back to on... Peter, What's that, sorry? Excited to watch Peter. I haven't watched him in a while. Actually. Yeah. Oh, and it was confirmed Sisters has left as well. Um, I don't really know what for. Um, I'll actually probably give him a message to see him if he's right. He got um... injured. Um, it was an injury. Uh, oh, okay. He released through the statement. Uh, I believe he's had too many concussions and he's taken the season off. Um, so, oh, okay. yeah, I popped him a message and um, I said, I hope everything's all right, et cetera. And he said, thank you very much. And oh, nice. he said, that Peter game will come Oh, nice. That'll, that'll be good then. Um, MK, they've got Telford at home. Again, MK are just too good at home, but they've got Hull away. So if that's a game that Hull really want to to make a statement, I think that'll be the one if they can beat Milton Keynes. Um, and then the Bees, they've got the Raiders on the Sunday and the Raiders have Hull on the Saturday. So yeah, those are the fixtures. Um, oh, Sheffield, sorry, massive for Sheffield. So Sheffield at home against Peterborough. I'm hearing that they're going to do not a, not a strong protest, but a protest in that they want communication. I think you did mention, Charlie, that's something you do want to know, and that's communication from either the owner yeah. or someone, what's happening with the club. So be interesting to see what's uh, what, what the vibes are like at Sheffield, because it's a late one on Saturday as well. It's half seven face-off. So, uh, yeah, and if they can cause an upset against the Phantoms, that'll be, that'll be really good. And then they've got Telford away on the Sunday. So those are the fixtures. Um, thank you again to Bo Neely for hopping on. Um, I'm sure it was a great interview. Obviously, we're doing it tomorrow. Um, we appreciate everyone listening. Hopefully, we'll have Dan back on next week. And we've got an interview hopefully coming up with youngster Brindley Caps, who's just got into the Raiders' um, first team. He's played a few games and he scored a goal for them as well. So that'll be a good interview, hopefully set up for next week. So uh, we're excited to have Brindley on. Um, as I said at the start, make sure to follow our socials at Macca's Talk Hockey, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.